Welcome back to Let's Make a Mess with UXW Bill. Promotional consideration and some prizes have been provided by Kirby's, home of the Broken Blue Light Special. And speaking of prizes, before we call our next contestant down to play here on Let's Make a Mess with UXW Bill, let's see what they could win. This is an automatic 40 pint electric dehumidifier from Edison, manufactured by the former and now defunct W.C. Wood Corporation of Canada. Let's take a closer look at it. All cheesy efforts at hosting a game show aside, this dehumidifier really was picked up from curbside discount, which ought to shed light on the intended spelling of Kirby's, for anyone out in the viewing audience who happened to be wondering. The first thing that struck me about this particular unit, other than the incredibly huge Energy Star logo on the top, is its condition. It's amazingly clean. There's no dust in the grill. The coils look clean. There's very little rust on it. The only rust I've seen is down at a screw here on the front panel. Other than that, there's nary a scratch on the paint or anything. I don't know what could have gone wrong with this thing, but I would imagine it's probably not all that serious. And it's nice to see for a change that somebody bought something other than the cheapest possible bargain basement, no features whatsoever model. And speaking of that particular model, I actually have a 15 pint version of this dehumidifier and it has a mechanical problem at the moment. The plastic fan had its uh, shaft hole wallowed out by the motor. I don't know if it started slipping a little bit and then it just got much worse over time but I actually need to buy a replacement blower blade for that thing. Granger has them. They're pretty cheap. I think they're like 10 or $11 plus whatever shipping and gouging and probably sales tax here in the state of Illinois would work out to be because I think Granger's headquartered in Chicago. But never mind all that. As I said, it's nice to see that someone bought something a little bit upmarket here. This was actually a pretty nice unit when it was new because you have two-speed fan, humidistat, which they all have, and of course a nice little light on the front that indicates when the uh, water bucket has filled up. I don't think my 15 pint unit has that, although it certainly has a shutoff switch and a humidistat. I'm not sure if this unit was intended for the trash or not, because if we turn it to face the camera here, you see that there's two pieces of blue masking tape on it. And if we bring that up to the camera, it looks like there was something stuck to it. Maybe someone put a free sign on this. Maybe someone intended to be selling it. In which case, oopsie, I may have stolen the dehumidifier, but <laughs> I certainly hope not. And I see that I've lied about one thing. The collection bucket is definitely not present on this unit, so we'll have to come up with a replacement for that. Luckily, I have a few of them in my, in my storage, because you're certainly not going to get one from W.C. Wood Appliances, as they are long since defunct. Go ahead and turn this around. Even the casters work surprisingly well on this thing, which is impressive when you consider that if we tilt the camera down here, you can see that it's actually sitting on a towel, which is not usually a recipe for smooth operation of casters. Let's see what particular refrigerant this unit is based upon. It is an Edison branded unit. In fact, you know what? We'll just bring the we'll bring the camcorder in up close and personal because it just wouldn't be a UXW Bill video without the scanning electron handicam making an appearance. So we'll just zoom in on the information label and anyone who's interested in reading that can pause the video to do so. I'll hit the highlights. Looks like this unit's from 2005 so it's actually newer than I thought. Actually made in Canada. I'm surprised and impressed. I would have expected something like this to be Made in China without question. It's still an R22 system. 2005 was pretty late in the life of R22, but they're really only starting to get after it now. I would have expected that maybe this unit would be using R500 because I have some mid-90s dehumidifiers that made use of that particular refrigerant. And I don't know if it's more environmentally sound or not. Somehow I doubt it. And I really kind of cast question on some of that business about refrigerants supposedly depleting the ozone layer because it seems awfully suspicious and well-timed to me that R134A, which was claimed to be certainly safer for the ozone layer when it first came out, well, 20 years on, 20 plus years on now, 
the patents are finally expiring and what do you know all of a sudden it's unsafe for the environment now since we've got this unit turned around initially I had plans just to plug it in live dangerously see what happens maybe have a real live smoke test one of these days here on this channel but instead since I brought my multimeter out I think the first thing we'll do is we'll look for the obvious defects we'll make sure that the uh, we'll start with the power switch off and what we'll do here is we'll clip one alligator lead to the ground on this unit somewhere and we'll just see if there are any shorts to ground now this is not a proper insulation breakdown test but if there's a really hard and nasty fault we'll catch it somewhere hmm, 448k ohms resistance it's a little bit lower than I would like to see and of course there's the ground which it's nice to see is not broken in fact it's actually quite nice to see that this unit actually has its power cord in place because that's something that for a while there the metal thieves and metal scrappers and I may anger some people when I say there's not a whole heck of a lot of difference between those two although that's not my intention certainly for a while power cords were a very popular target they wouldn't take anything else from something that was left out on the curb but by golly they sure would cut the power cord off wouldn't really be a problem for me go ahead and just turn this thing around somebody got after me recently for saying this unit Well, what else would you use to describe a device I, I realize that sometimes my prose is not perfect but I think it's pretty good for what it is and that it's downright brilliant for being completely unscripted and unrehearsed speaking of unscripted and unrehearsed we're gonna live dangerously I'm going to unplug the chest freezer, put that power cord aside. Of course, you just watch. Before this video is over, that thing will fall down behind the chest freezer and make me irritated. And we'll just see what's wrong with this thing. I'm going to take a guess. If anything's wrong with it, it'll either be the bucket switch is burned out, or the blower fan is slipping on the motor shaft, and thus it can't get up to anything like full speed. All right, plugged it in, and nothing dramatic happened. Of course, I haven't turned it on yet. So let's just turn it on and see what happens. Ooh, the compressor went out on its overload almost instantly. And it didn't sound very healthy either. That may not be a good sign. That compressor may be screwed. And if it is, unfortunately, it's probably not worth repairing. I guess we'll try it again here in a little bit and just see if it manages to start up. That's kind of a shame for a unit that's as clean as this thing is. I mean, I have, a, I have a unit here that has a leak somewhere in it. I picked it up off, uh, off the curb years and years ago and have been gradually harvesting parts off of it to fix others. And the compressor in it's good. I mean, I could swap the compressor. I'm not licensed to handle refrigerant yet, but that's something I'm working on right now. I'm scheduled to take classes on that very exciting subject. Of course, it could be that the uh, starting device on the compressor is also bad because it sounded like it tried to take off and run like it wasn't suffering from a locked rotor of course there could be there could be myriad problems in that compressor I haven't heard that overload cut back in yet so we'll just we'll try it again here in a little bit I may trim this down with some video editing so you don't have to sit and watch but we'll just see if that overload brings itself back in here they're thermally operated, but it could have gotten quite hot in the short amount of time that it ran. I don't know if I have anything around here that would have a compatible starting device and overload, but there the overload cut back in, so let's just try that again. And you know, This time I think I'll lower the Handycam down a little bit. Hmm, I think I smell something kind of burnt. I wonder if it's this unit. I don't know. I don't know if that's just the uh, the smell of the place that it was located in, or if uh, something did just go horribly wrong. But we'll try it again real quick here. You can actually see the compressor through the grill. You can see it better than I can for some reason. So let's try again. And that time, the compressor didn't even try to start. So I'm wondering if the overload's defective on it. 
if the starting device on the overload is messed up. It certainly could be. Yeah, it's not even not even trying to start now. So this unit will probably be the subject of further exploration. I might see what's involved in getting an overload for one of these. It's probably worth doing because if you've ever priced one of these, they certainly are not cheap. I've removed the front grill to reveal something somewhat unfortunate, at least the start of something unfortunate. First of all, it looks like there might have been some exposure to floodwaters here, perhaps. Not entirely sure, but look at that dirt all over the compressor. That almost looks like water rose up over the top of it, and being that these things do find a lot of use in people's basements, that's certainly entirely plausible. But worse than that, I stuck my nose in around the location of the overload protector and starter on the compressor, and something in there definitely smells burnt. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to get a screwdriver, pop the cover on this thing, and just take a closer look at it. You'll notice there's no name brand on this compressor, which is somewhat surprising. It's just an anonymous black orb. I don't know if the label fell off, or perhaps it's of anonymous Chinese manufacturer. It's really hard to tell. Examining the compressor in further detail does in fact reveal the manufacturer. It's just facing the wrong way around. For anyone to actually see the maker or the model, but you can tell that's Samsung's logo, and even if you couldn't, here on the starter and overload, they certainly manufactured that, and the two parts usually come together. Now the only thing I've got to do is pop that off of there, and I'm not entirely sure how that's designed to come off, but it looks like there's some clips holding that on. So I'll have to get a bladed screwdriver and pop them out of there and see what we've got. I expect this is some kind of solid state module because it actually says Samsung Electronics on it, as opposed to something simple. So here we are with the cover removed, and much to my surprise, there are no electronics in here, just simple electrical switching, what you'd find on any other compressor. You have the starting device right here, and then we have the overload. Now I haven't tested the starting device yet, and if anyone's wondering to do how about how to do that, I'll talk about it more in the video description because I'm not really going to, to get into it here on what's supposed to be a relatively quick video. But this is the overload on the unit. This is a genuine clicks on part too. And sure enough, this bad boy does not pass the smell test. This thing smells really, really bad. <laughs> And I would say, in all likelihood, it probably is faulty. But the question is, is the failure here the cause of the problem, or is it the effect? Is something else wrong in here causing this problem? Like, do we have a grounded compressor? Do we have partially shorted windings in the compressor? And I've got to admit that even as happy as I was to see that this unit was not manufactured in China like they all are today, Unfortunately, it seems like the quality control just really wasn't there on a number of different fronts. Maybe, maybe not the quality control so much, but certainly the quality of the parts was not everything that it ought to have been. Case in point, many of you who watch this channel are aware of dehumidifiers, air conditioners, similar refrigeration systems that have run without fault for 20, 30, 40, or even more years. And usually when something wears out on them, it's only after it's given you a very good lifetime of service. And looking at this float switch over here, which operates this little micro switch right here, if I actuate that float, tell me what you don't hear. There's no click. I think that little switch is probably all burned up inside. Now obviously it failed in the on position, but still, that's just another one of the things that should never happen here. Although in other aspects of this dehumidifier's construction, I have to say that I am fairly impressed. The little fan motor is just as Chinese as Chinese can be, but it's actually a pretty robust looking little motor. It even has a run capacitor stuck to the bottom of it, which is surprising to see. Usually you just see a simple little shaded pole induction motor in these things. This one takes it up to the next level. So we've definitely got an overload problem here. Don't know about the starting device, but like I say, I'll, I'll test that later. But one test that we can definitely make right now. We want to find out if the compressor is healthy. 
And we can use our wonderful ohmmeter to do that. I don't know what resistances are ideal for this compressor, but the first thing we're going to look at, as soon as I get these leads untangled, I don't know what it is about meter leads, but they're always tangling up on me. And this time's no different. We'll clip this to the ground. I fear there may be a problem in here because with the switch turned on, which I should have done earlier, I usually make the test with the switch both ways. With the switch turned on, there is disturbingly low resistance between one side of the line and ground. So I'm wondering if the compressor doesn't have a problem of some kind. And yeah, that might be a grounded compressor that we're looking at there. Because I should have essentially infinite resistance or very close to, and, and I don't. So that may be the end of the line for this poor thing. That overload may have been sitting there beating itself to death until it finally burned out and failed. Because unfortunately I think this compressor is suffering a, a grounding problem. That one or more of the windings in it are shorted out. So that is probably the end of the road for this particular unit. Yes, just to reaffirm my suspicions here with the compressor taken completely out of the picture, if I go between chassis ground and either of the pins on the power cord, I now have the infinite resistance reading that I'm supposed to have. So I'm about 99 and a half percent, no, probably 99 and three quarters percent sure that this compressor is toast. But since this chassis is in such good shape, I may, as part of my pursuing a course in refrigeration, I may just try swapping the compressor on this thing as a class project because I have a good one out of a unit that has a refrigerant leak, and if I could get it to bolt up and fit, well, I could probably sweat that thing in there, but that'll have to wait for another day, probably a long time in the future, because like I say, I'm not even uh, supposed to take my refrigerant license cl licensing and handling class until this fall sometime, but that's definitely coming down the pipe. And I'll also be learning how to do things like sweating pipe together, brazing, that sort of thing. And again, this might make for some real good practice in that regard. So we'll see what happens with this thing. For right now, though, I'll put it back together with a note on it that the compressor is in all probability bad. What an unfortunate ending, especially for a unit that's what, uh, 12 years old, basically, right now? That's, that's just way too soon for one of these things. Because here we have a chest freezer that's basically 45 years old. And we have another one here that's uh, about 35 years old. <laughs> and they both still work perfectly. So refrigeration systems are normally a lot more reliable than this. And even as charitable of an individual as I am who tries to see the brightest side of anything, I can't help but think that this was simply the result of subpar manufacturing quality. On a much happier note, however, take a look at the absolutely gigantic sun on this sunflower. That thing is huge. That's got to be like 10 inches across if I measured it, maybe even a foot. Thank you as always for watching, and certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one.